What's up guys, Andrew Kramer here, videocopilot.net, and welcome back to another very exciting blog show. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at creating a superhero landing, just like this. We're also gonna be taking a look at the different techniques we use to create the entire sequence. All right, let's go and take a look. Before we see Sam crashing down into the ground, we wanted to show him on top of a building. Now, we were gonna do this on a real rooftop without any safety harness or any safety equipment. And Sam wanted to back out at the last minute. I'm not sure why. So we did a simple thing. We set up a small platform on the green screen and then allowed him to just jump down from it. And then we could actually animate his head dropping past the ledge. Help! Next, we built our digital rooftop inside of After Effects with Element 3D. We started by creating some various rooftop assets, things like air conditioning and pipes and vents. Once we had this kit, it was easy to place objects anywhere we wanted, then experiment with various camera movements. To add even more variation to the models, we even created some sticker decals, and these could be placed anywhere in the scene to just add a little bit more detail and help sell the scale of the 3D objects. We also added some rotation to the fan blades using the auxiliary animation. By using a single auxiliary channel, we could actually control all of the fans at once. There's probably some air conditioning technician watching this thinking to himself, you would never put an HVAC unit next to a multi-band antenna array. What is this? Movies can't get anything right. This is full of I want some answers, hey! Another really cool shot is when Sam walks across the rooftop. Since we didn't have enough green screen to do a complete 180 degree pan, we actually did a forced perspective shot. So what happened was Sam was actually walking towards the camera and then turned away from the camera. And what we did is we changed the background to make it look like he was actually walking in a straight line. We created a 3D scene and mixed it with building images and sky images in the background. And this allows you to pan the camera freely around the entire frame. So there's all these really cool tricks that you can do to try to make it look like your shots and your worlds exist in a much bigger world than they really do. Motorcycle sound, here it comes, it's coming back. I need a motorcycle, forget about my problems. <laughs> Another shot we wanted to have was Sam falling through the air. So we did a really simple shot of filming Sam's feet dangling on the green screen and we had the leaf blower blowing wind up at his feet and we just created a full CG shot of a city building just going up and the camera moving down through it. And you put those two shots together and you really get the speed and the momentum of his fall. For the elevator scene, we started by building some basic assets and components. The elevator shaft itself is actually made out of some basic 3D primitives, along with some pipes and industrial elements from the Motion Design 2 pack. Instead of trying to create one huge elevator shaft, we focused on building a single component that we could then replicate and create as many floors as we want. Then we could go back to the design and change some of the pipes or change some of the features and it would cascade into the entire design. This is actually a really useful technique that can be used for all sorts of things. Not everything has to be about explosions. One cool thing about this workflow was doing the pre-visualization for the elevator scene. So what we could do is we could create a bunch of different shots of the elevator flying in and figure out what shots go together well before you do all the compositing. In fact, that was the easy part. Making all these crazy visual effects breakdowns, trying to reverse engineer a bunch of project files that you worked on three weeks ago. <laughs> To composite the smoke elements into the scene, we use what's called a world position pass. It's similar to a Z-depth pass, which is a calculation of the distance from the camera to an object. But what's cool about a world position pass is that it creates a value that is locked into 3D space. This makes it easy to place live action smoke elements exactly in 3D space with the proper occlusion and not have to worry about the movement of the camera changing the depth. Now, originally there wasn't gonna be an elevator scene, but I showed my daughter the scene of Sam jumping off the building and crash landing, and her first reaction was, why didn't he just use the elevator? 
said, what are you talking about? It's a tutorial video. It doesn't have to make sense. So trying to be a good dad, encourage creativity, I thought maybe I could just make a shot of a broken elevator, easy. But then I thought, what if the elevator comes falling down? So then that one visual effect shot turned into six. And we had to get really close, so we needed warning labels. And now the elevator is crashing, so we had to add some destruction elements. And so we made a whole new shot of sand blood, removed the door, the shaft, had some sound design, and connected with elevator scene. So the moral of the story is, don't talk to your kids. Our main objective was to be able to create a shot that actually looked like it smashes into the ground. To get the jump and the landing right, we tried it a few different ways. So we had Sam do it more stiff, more bounce, more intensity. It's always a good idea to get some different takes and we actually wanted to try it with some different actors too, but Bruce Willis wasn't available, Chris Evans wasn't available, and Robert Downey Jr. wasn't available, and Mel Gibson, he was available. And uh, we just, you know, we missed his call. Give me back my son! To create the destruction, we used a variety of techniques. For the initial impact, we created the street in 3ds Max using thinking particles to simulate the road breaking apart. Then we composited the geometry in After Effects using our shockwave elements and some amazing 4K dust elements from a secret new collection. To create the destruction aftermath, we used a single 3D object distributed into the scene using Element 3D. This allowed us to place the chunks close to the camera and form a crater. Then we combined the shot with falling debris and let Sam's acting do the rest. You don't, you know, like, don't be so um, dramatic. Now, not to make the shot more difficult, but we decided to shoot it on a dolly. And so this means we have to do a 3D camera track. But once we do that, we can actually move through real 3D geometry. So all the broken pieces of concrete and rocks and debris, we can actually get a real sense of moving through it. So even though it's a little bit more difficult to do, it's definitely worth it in the end result. I don't even think Robocop is a superhero. He's just a regular man who died. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm Andrew Kramer. Be sure to check out videocopilot.net. We're gonna put up the project files and tutorials on this sequence, so follow along, have fun, and we'll see you next time. We got one. Okay, let's just try one more. But don't limit yourself. You can also make a superhero take off. Just play the clip in reverse.